What's happening, Snacker Stars? It's Brandon from the SAS, the Snack Food Appreciation Society, coming at you on another Friday. You know what that means? It's time for pizza night, and this week it's a Frozen Friday edition. Where did I get my pizza? How much did it cost? And will it taste good? That's all that matters on pizza night. Never fear, pizza night is here. So grab yourself a can of beer. It's Friday night, December 11th, 2015. Another rough day on the high seas indeed. And today we have encountered another frozen Friday. So what is in the infamous, ridiculously expensive Brandon sack, 5,000? Let's pull it out of the box and find out. It is. From Culinary Circle, it is the Rising Crust Macaroni and Cheese with Bacon Pizza. This I picked up at the Shopper's Food Warehouse up in Landmark Plaza. They are two for $10, making this bad boy five bucks. And taking a look at the wonderful photograph on that bad boy, looks like he got uh, macaroni and cheese on there and bacon, just like they said, with some kind of cheese sauce. So let's turn it over and see what they say. It's got cheddar cheese sauce, macaroni, a blend of mozzarella and cheddar cheeses, and bacon on a crust. Hmm, that sounds appetizing, a crust. Anyway, welcome to Culinary Circle, an expansive array of inspiring foods carefully cultivated, or rather curated, for those with sophisticated palates. Modernize your recipes with new flavor profiles. You can read the rest yourself by pausing this video. And there's the baking directions. If you want a crispier crust, you preheat your oven to 400. I don't want that, so let's go over to the softer crust. Preheat the oven for 400 still. Remove the pizza from the packaging. Uh, place pizza on baking sheet on center oven rack. Okay, I will think I'll do that. And it says bake for 22 to 26 minutes or until cheese in the center is melted and the crust is golden. All right, so I've gone ahead and preheated my oven to about 375, 380 because we know my oven runs extremely hot. So let's go ahead and see what happens with that. But anyway, let's also pull this thing out of the box and show you what it looks like. Okay, as you can see here, uh, it does have mozzarella cheese on there, and it does have what appears to be some cheddar cheese, but in very odd places, just kind of strewn about and with not much consistency there. Lots of bacon appears to be on this pizza, so that's pretty good. And yes, there is macaroni on here as well. Not as much as I would expect, even though they did show that it was relatively sparse on the uh, box, but you know, a macaroni and cheese pizza you think is gonna be pretty heavy with the macaroni. Anyway, uh, all right, so let's go ahead and pop it in the oven for you. And when we come back, we'll show you exactly what it looks like. All right, we're back. And basically what I did is I checked it at seven minute intervals. I went seven minutes and then seven minutes more. And at that point, I started to see some blackening around the edges of the crust. So I said, let's just go three minutes more. And this is what we got. Now, the blackening I'm referring to is the stuff that's just kind of laying out on the outs outer perimeter of the crust out here. Uh, I don't really consider that burnt. It's just, uh, you know, fairly, w fairly well done. But anyway, taking a look at this pizza... I like the look at this of this crust. It looks like it can re retain some softness without getting too too crispy, and that seems to be the, tr the case. Also, appears to be dusted with either a cheese of some kind or maybe that's corn. I'm not really sure. Uh, taking a look at the inside, the toppings of the pizza itself. Lots of bacon in some places, and bacon is kind of scarce in other places. But overall. A pretty fair share of bacon. Also, the cheeses look fantastic all melted together. All the yellows and the whites and everything. Swimming in, in their pool of tranquility. Uh, the one thing that puzzles me though. They didn't seem to cover all the macaronis up with the cheese. So it's like literally macaroni and cheese. Not macaroni and cheese. Anyway, that's okay. I'm sure it'll be all sorted out in your mouth. I'll be right back with a slice of this thing to show you the 420 and then we'll get on with it. All right, I have sliced it up using my uh, 
patented method of having four small slices and two large slices. I tend to like to do that because everybody has different tastes. Everybody wants different amount of pizza. So why not let that happen? All right, let me go ahead and pick up this 420 slice and pick it up. And you can see it does have a decent amount of flop to it, but it did crisp up a bit in the oven there. And you already saw that there's some macaronis that are in desperate need of cheese, but that's all right. There's a lot of cheese everywhere else. It's very hot and I like the feel of this uh, piece of pizza. Anyway, the 420 slice is going back where it goes and I'll be right back to put pizza where it goes that's in my mouth and I'll be right back. All right, gang, I am back here with another edition of Pizza Night and this pizza looks really interesting, I have to admit. I love macaroni and cheese, I love bacon, and I love pizza, so why not put them together, right? So let's see how the Culinary Circle did with this product. Now, Culinary Circle itself, I've never heard of the brand outside of Shoppers Food Warehouse, so I don't know if it's a privately owned brand by Shoppers or if they're one of these brands that supplies to some of the grocery stores throughout the country, but I did go to their website and they make a lot of stuff. They make all kinds of food, uh, more than you would think, but... Uh, Anyway, let me go ahead and pick back up that 420 slice since it, se since it seems to be fairly well distributed in terms of all of the different products that indeed come with this macaroni and bacon pizza. Uh, very, very uh, evenly cooked on the bottom. I think I did a pretty good job. I think I guessed the uh, temperature pretty well. And outside of that little bit of blackening on the outside, not too, too bad. All right, let me go ahead and take a bite of this thing and let you know what I think about it. Ladies and gentlemen, I have just ingested the best frozen pizza crust I've ever had in my entire life. Man, you know that most frozen pizza crusts, no matter how thick they are, no matter what they look like, no matter what they do, they're generally going to crisp up a lot and just be kind of like a cracker. Man, this pizza crust has the perfect... Uh, overall consistency to it. I love it. It's kind of thick and bready, but not so much that you feel like you're eating a French bread pizza or something like that. But the flavor, man, the flavor of that crust is also outstanding. It's got a little bit of that sort of yeasty flavor that you get from pizzeria restaurants. That's how I would describe it anyway, yeasty and bleachy a little bit. Maybe that's not what you think it tastes like, but that's what I think it tastes like, and I like that. Um, getting to the actual pizza product itself with the toppings and the theme of this pizza, another home run. Uh, I was, you know, worried about this. I was like, ah, it doesn't have any tomato sauce or pepperoni on it. I'm in the mood for tomato sauce and pepperoni. Well, now I'm in the mood for this macaroni and cheese and bacon pizza. The cheese sauce is thick, uh, you know, not runny in the least. It's going to stay on your slice of pizza, and that's a good thing. Then it's got the melty mozzarella in there, and then just hints of that melty cheddar as well. All the cheeses come together to taste fantastic, but in that kind of craft singles kind of way, just a little bit. But you know, you know how good that tastes in a grilled cheese sandwich, right? Yeah, don't don't fool yourself. It tastes fantastic. Uh, the bacon is actually really good too. Um, it's crispy after having it in the oven, and it's got a nice smoky pork flavor without being like fakey. I think it's real bacon. It's not bacos or something like that. So pretty good there. Guys, five dollars. This on a Friday night and a good tape out of the red box. I guess they don't have tapes, but DVD out of the red box. You got a home freaking run and a full thumbs up from me, me, the BRE and the Snack Food Appreciation Society. Anyway, thanks for watching Pizza Night this week, guys. Super amped and siced as we have eclipsed the 500,000, that's right, 500K, well before New Year's Day, some three weeks before. I gotta thank everybody, but we're gonna do that in a special video this coming week, so look for it after Sunday. It'll probably be Monday, the way schedule goes. So uh, take a look at it then, and we have some special announcements coming up about the future of the SAS as well as well as a special presentation we're going to make, and more. So make sure you stay tuned for that on Monday. Also, Sunday, of course, you have another edition of Snack Breeze. We're checking out those hot cocoa uh, chips ahoy that everybody's been talking about. Then, 
Tuesday, I'm going back on the road for OTR. You never know who might show up for OTR. Back again on Wednesday with Quick Chips, and then we wrap up the week right here where we are on Pizza Night. Thanks so much again for watching. You can join the SAS group on Facebook by clicking on the link down below. So many of the coolest people in the whole world are in our group, and you should be too. Check out the description to find that link. Also, follow me on Twitter and the Instagrams at BrandonReichSAS. Make sure you use the hashtag Snack Society in all of your snacking adventures online, whether it's on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Tumblr, Pinterest, I don't know, all the things the kids do these days. Make sure you put the Snack Society hashtag on there as well. Man, I was doing so good. Now to screw it all up. Anyway, thanks for watching. In the meantime, in between time, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.